Well, look who we've bumped into. <laughs> once again, that's three out of three. You can see the spots behind there. So Brent, you're falling behind once again, but our little green-eyed boy is in the same place as he was yesterday morning. So there's the beautiful Tumba. There's tracks for his mom going northwards away from where we are now. I was just looking at her tracks and then Seb spotted him walking on the bank right next to us. So he's in the same place. He's watching Franklin's much like what he was doing yesterday on his own shame boy now the Franklins are all around him once again much like what we saw yesterday and he's watching them and looking at them now don't lie down there please but you're going to aren't you yes you are because you can see look at that camouflage right there so if you were driving past now and you weren't paying attention that's how difficult it can be to spot a leopard he's no more than five meters from us but you would really struggle to be able to see any sign of him from where he is now it's basically just little ears in the grass and he's lying in there because of the franklins shouting at him i'm sure he wants them to all go away and to stop making a noise and so that's why he's positioned himself in that thicket but we are being so spoiled by this guy to be able to find him day after day or drive after drive like we have has been so special so I'm very glad that we have found him. Hopefully this morning he has a little bit more of a restful morning and doesn't get pushed around by the big grey pachyderms that were around yesterday. So I'm hoping that he's just going to have a good restful morning and mom will come back with a surprise for him. That's what I hope is that there's going to be food and we'll be able to follow him and mom towards where a carcass is. So our sticks mission is going to have to be put on hold. I was just saying earlier when we unfortunately lost a bit of signal is that Juma has been so good to us recently, we haven't had to actually spend too much time on Chitwa, we haven't had to go to the dam too much because we've been kept busy by so many tracks, oh, look at those eyes, um, so many tracks and so many cats on this side of the world that it really has been fantastic, we've had lots in our backyard so to speak. Paul, you're wondering how the injured leopard is, which is, she. you're referring to Shadow, um, unfortunately no, no Paul, since the day that we've seen her she hasn't been found again. Um, we've looked in that area and you know we're finding tracks for her but we just haven't been able to find her as I was mentioning the one day it's, it's an injured leopard like that is not a leopard you want to be walking around on foot with it's, a, it's a, a leopard that's going to be feeling nervous it's got a cub and so we've been giving that area a bit of a wide berth we haven't been walking in that area too much just because we don't want to stress her any, in any way we want her to try and have the best possible chance of recovering and so we've left her to be able to kind of just sort herself out and, and we will take a turn past there now that Taylor will be back this afternoon and it's not just myself uh, we'll be able to concentrate a little bit more about driving in that area and spending time in that area because at the end of the day when it's just me we kind of get a bit distracted and we've had so much time with this little boy that we see here and I haven't been able to spend enough time in that area to actually look for her properly but I know some of the other guides have and they haven't come up with anything just yet ears are moving again eyes are all over the place typical little tumba he's such a curious cat he almost always is looking around and checking and he seems to have this thing where he likes to look over his head basically he kind of tilts his head back and looks backwards without turning his head around maybe he's just too lazy to swivel it's easier just to flop it back towards his back and watch over that way I wonder if that's where he's going to settle. It looks as though he's getting a little bit sleepy. You can see the head is bobbing. I think he might put that head down. If he puts his head down, we're really going to battle to see him. Imreedal, you want to know what is the ages that lion, leopard and cheetah cubs become independent from their mothers? Well, that's quite a long question, so I'll start with the leopards since we're looking at the Pultumba. Leopards, generally between 14 months and 2 years is when you will see a leopard breaking apart from its mother and moving off into its own territory. Remember that both female and male will separate from the mom and set up territories and they will then no longer see each other as a mother-daughter or a mother-son relationship if the, if the male tends to spend more time here he's going to then see that female even if it's his mom as a potential mating source or his sister or anything like that so they set up territories and they are then 
if it's a female in the fringe of the mother's territory, if it's a male generally distributed away from that area. So anywhere between 14 months and two years, but we do know that sometimes it happens earlier. Sometimes females will push their cubs out a little bit earlier around the year old, or sometimes even as much as three and a half is the oldest cub that I've ever seen with a female. She in fact had a new litter by that point and was able to raise not only her big three and a half year old male, but two one year old males at the same time. It was quite a feat to see her do so. In terms of lions, lions if they're females, generally they are absorbed into the pride, so they never actually get pushed out by their, their moms, but they are able to take care of themselves and become individuals that are mature and sexually mature and breeding at around three and a half to four years as a female. Sometimes they can mate a little bit earlier than that, as at two and a half years, but generally most females will give birth to their first set of cubs around three and a half, and that's when we kind of classify them as no longer dependent on the female bits. Two to three years would be a time that sometimes the females will push their males and, and particularly the females away and start mating and having potentially having cubs of their own again. So that kind of bracket. In cheetah, very similar. So it's all the same. It's around two years until if it's males that they'll then get pushed out and go and form a coalition on their own. Or if it's a female, she'll get pushed out and try and find her own territory. So it's generally around that same sort of period, around two years for all the cats, but it depends on the social structure. Remember, like I said with lions, that the females will stay within the pride. Males generally then get cast aside by the male himself and not the females at around three and a half to four years old. Right, I'm going to try.